And to other states out of Nigeria, the mock accreditation using BVAS took place in 12 designated centers across the senatorial district of the state. Payne Primary School, one of the center's party agents, voters and observers were on ground to participate in the mock exercise. The process went on smoothly, but Ani Umore, that's Unoru, a local observer raised observations in certain aspects of the exercise while speaking shortly after monitoring the process. At a state resident electoral commissioner, Obo Efanga, speaks on the essence of the mock registration. Basically, there were things to look out for um, since this is a mock accreditation. And it's one of the things is the BVA. Um, how well it accredits, how many minutes. Um, I think another thing to also look out for is if it's going to last long, you know, uh, some of the challenges that we've actually had. And the fact that this is the first time um, the BVA is going to be used in Edo, it's been used, I think it's been test run in mm. Oshun and Ekiti, but this is the first time it's going to be used in Edo. So um, these are some of the things that um, people needed to see how it works. I've seen my name, I, I, can, I ask, uh, but I vote in. Uh, Ogola Primary School. Then I just came to come and ask about my name here, and I'm seeing my name. My name is still in my unit, there, unit 11, there where my name is before. My name is still there and everything. But what they are doing is okay, it's okay. I just love it, it's okay. And interestingly, in Edo State, we've not had an opportunity to use the beavers before now. So this is a good opportunity for people to see how it works effectively. And um, I also was interested in knowing how long it takes to uh, accredit each person. And from what I've seen there, one minute has been the max it took to accredit anyone. Some people it accredited them within 10 seconds, 15 seconds and all that. So I think this is good. Um, for some of the people who also turn up, they were able to also confirm uh, effectively which polling unit they are going to vote. All right, let's discuss this uh, further with the RISE News uh, Analyst and the Deputy Dean of uh, Postgraduate Studies, Bayes University, Professor Abiyad Mwadini. Congratulations on that uh, new elevation. Thank you very much, Christian. Yeah, yeah appreciate it. Uh, the Beavers, yeah. we've seen uh, quite a lot of demonstrations across the state and uh, the people are happy. And uh, the time lapse, you know, for it is uh, just about one minute. So if you have yeah. 500 um, voters in a unit, you know, you'd uh, be home uh, good and yeah. well. Yeah. And no doubt that report is not a bad helicopter coverage of um, the exercise across the country. And of course, the welcome development that INEC, you know, is doing all it can to prepare for the election with the mock exercise, you know, you know, we're in feverish times, or probably INEC itself is in feverish times now. Business end of the game, you know, and so if whatever they can do to get ready is in order, like they are doing, but we have to be able to make a distinction between preparation and the, and the action itself, the election proper. The election proper could be another ball game, you know. Election is a multi-stakeholder affair. It's okay that they are preparing, but what about other stakeholders in the process? They are close to about 10 stakeholders in the election process. The other significant arm of it is the security. So what are the security agencies doing? How are they also going to prepare as much as INEC uh, is doing? So, so why INEC is trying to put its arts um, together, get its arts right, we need all other stakeholders to also be preparing because um, if the atmosphere around the election, around the process is not conducive, if it's not safe, the beavers may not be able to work. And beside that is the need for sensitization, you know, mm -hmm. um, so that we can have as much people participating in the process as possible. We have over 90,000 um, registrants, people ready to vote now. Um, oftentimes, we've we'll, we'll only witnessed a quarter of that power population of registrants, you know, participating in the election. What is the problem? How do we uh, deal with voter party? You know, how do we make a difference at uh, this time? I think voter education, sensitization is also very important. We have also had a frenzy in the build-up to, to the election uh, through frenetic campaigns, sometimes getting the ill-tempered. You know, how is that going to even up, you know, to the creation of awareness among the citizens on the need for them to be part of the process of determining the transition, of participating in this transition, in determining who leads them in the future. And not just who leads them, but who leads them correctly. You know, all this will have to come to play. Even while we're commending INEC, 
um, for being uh, preparatory towards the exercise, the election process. Absolutely. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's not just an INEC thing. The election, yeah. like you say, it has a lot of uh, key stakeholders, mm -hmm. and political parties is one of them. Most yeah. of the voters already, of course, they know who they want to vote for, thanks to the political parties who have probably spoken to them about, um, you know, their plans. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, INEC needs to do more. You must agree in terms of educating the voters. So carrying the political parties along, how important is that? So that way, at least their followers are able to be familiar mm -hmm. with this technology way before time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good uh, question, no doubt, uh, Mamaka. But would you realize that INOC is, INOC is not um, the only uh, party, you know, the only agency? It you is know. the umpire, so it's no, in it, It's not the only one responsible for the success of the election. That's right. the point I'm making. They are doing their best. We have acknowledged that, you know. And, of course, they've been involved in voter education. They have a, a whole department responsible for voter education. They have so many literature. They have so many, um, you know, educator uh, um, programs, you know, creating awareness. Yes, even though we need them to do some more, there are other agencies that should also be responsible. Some other institutions as well, which is the political parties. They also have a role, you know, to galvanize, you know, to move or conscientize, you know, their members, you know, on how to be compliant with the electoral process, you know. And that's why we keep talking about the process being a multi-stakeholder one. The security agency has also involved, yes, of course, we see preparations on the part of the civil society, on the part of the media, on the part of local or international observers. We are seeing it around us, you know, even on the streets. We are seeing the arrival of uh, foreign observers, you know, of, of different sets of mission which is already telling us that something, something is amiss or something is about to happen around us. So while all, all parties are getting prepared, you know, agencies most critical in the process or institutions most critical in the process do not have to shag their responsibility right. at this time. Do not forget that it's a time of frenzy. It's a time of fright. And those, if situations are not right, we don't want to have a situation where, like we had four years ago, where I had to postpone for another one week, you know. That postponement, if you, if you, see, if you remember, was caused by some levels of fright, mm -hmm. you know, because this thing is now upon us. What do we do? We do not want that to happen again because it costs a lot in terms of emotions, you know, draining us, you know, stressing the system, and of course, directly or indirectly affecting the economy. We do not want this kind of shift this time around, and that's why we're saying call to action, um, this is the time it should happen. Good that INEC is doing its best, but all other agencies, institutions will also have to be responsible, most particularly the political parties. Not just about campaigns, but about moving their, conscientizing their supporters, you know, to be compliant with the process, realizing that it's a period of um, technology. And the essence of the technology is for us to guarantee to have a free, fair, credible, and even transparent election. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, some people are asking how waterproof is the beavers is the beavers really going to be the game changer that um, as it's being touted yeah that is, as as it's being touted you know yeah. when you look at the outcome of the ocean state tribunal yeah. no, election judge yeah. you know goods that it doesn't need the internet to function yeah, yeah. well it's, it's all right to the extent that um, technology has a way of limiting human interaction you know has a way of um, uh, separating uh, human intention, taking away emotions, taking away sentiments from processes and procedures. You will say, okay, it's supposed to make the election credible. But do not forget that it's one thing to have the technology, it's another thing, again, to be able to use it correctly for all circumstances to be right. And finally, what happens in the post-election period in terms of reviews, you know, in terms of interpretations or misinterpretations, you know, yeah, it can be subjected to different kinds of inter interpretation. Outcomes matter, like you rightly cited in the case of the Oshun. Interpretations could matter with respect to you know, the actual number of voters as dictated by beavers, and of course, um, what the uh, tribunal uh, described as maybe the voters' n number that was surplus to Over the one produced uh, by, by beavers. So, different kinds of interpretation. What and that's why we're saying that, that it's not just about technology, Amaka. Right. We also need you know, the human element responsible for interacting with these technologies to, be, to also be conscientious about the process. Otherwise, we might be working in vain. Yeah, you, but you know, why we hail INEC for this move of this mock yeah. accreditation process? Um, you are a, profe uh, a professor of uh, uh, communications, uh, diffusion of innovation theory, of course. Some would say that is what we're seeing here, which yeah. is a good look. But we've seen a lot of them hail INEC, but mm -hmm. 
INEC is yet to come out with a stance to tell us some of the shortcomings mm. that it noticed during this process. And we do yeah. know that the elections are barely three weeks away. So do you think INEC will be able to get its act together, probably learn a, a thing or two from this exercise and make mm. sure we have a smooth election? Come yeah, May yeah good, nice one. I, I think they should. The you know, they've been preparing. The preparation didn't just start um, three weeks, it started Saturday. started a long time ago. And from all we know, government has been very, very responsive in terms of uh, providing funds for them. I would not have any major complaint from them, you know, that you know they are incapacitated, and they also we're also aware that they get different kinds of support, you know, from national and multinational interest groups, you know. So, um, all hands should be on deck in their own in, on their own part to make sure that it is successful, and um, otherwise, we do not see any reason why it shouldn't uh, be successful. And of course, it is a very critical exercise in the determination of uh, of a nation state as a, an evolving one. And it's one that we cannot take for granted. Right. Yes, February 23rd, um, just around the corner, of course, INEC say they are ready and prepared yeah. to deliver credible elections to Nigerians. So Professor Abiyadu Adini, thank you for your analysis. Thank tonight. you.